Hey everybody, I'm Jammer, and today we're going to be taking a look at Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition for Nintendo Switch. For my quick background with this game, I played it for over 100 hours on the Wii U, easily one of my favorite Wii U titles. It being my first Dynasty Warrior game, this is the first time I've ever really seen this kind of gameplay model, and I thought it was just so unique with its characters and weapons. That's really what stood out to me so much is, is how diverse the cast felt lit from Link using a fire rod, Impa using a great sword, and they really all stay true to their character. Like Xant felt super wild and crazy with his two swords while Gandalf felt very powerful and strong and heavy hitting. And beyond that, it was just such a nostalgia trip for a Zelda fan and really catered to fans of that series. I ended up buying all the DLC to support this game, but I never actually got around to finishing all the adventure maps. There was just so much content, it was a bit overwhelming, so I never got around to finishing them all. I did get to at least play most of the characters that came with the DLC, but I never actually had a chance to finish all the adventure maps and all the content that this game has to offer. When the 3DS version of Legends came out, I was a little sad that it got exclusive content because I wouldn't have an opportunity to play it. I mean, yes, you could have brought over some of the characters and whatever, but there was a lot of story content and adventure maps that I'd never had an opportunity to play. And because the experience was kind of held back for its hardware limitations, it really wasn't the most optimal way to play this game. That's why bef before they even started announcing Wii U ports for Switch, back in the NX days, we were talking about let's bring over Hyrule Warriors to Switch as a definitive package, and that's what we got here! So I was very excited at the opportunity to play it and really finally get a good grasp on everything this game has to offer. Before we really get into my full impressions and stuff, I kind of wanted to go over the differences between these versions and these games here, because I know there's a lot of confusion between that, because psh, there's three versions now. Which one's the definitive one? It's this one. It's in the title. So starting off with just some general information, the game runs at 1080p, 60 frames per second in TV mode. Contrary to the other versions where the Wii U anyways would drop the 30 frames for multiplayer and, and ran at a little bit of lower resolution than obviously the 3DS much, 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 much lower. <laughs> There's a plenty of new settings in the menu to adjust controls and music and stuff. I'm not gonna list it all here, it's not extremely exciting. But what is, is that all 29 characters return from the previous installments and are all playable here. So all the characters are previously paid DLC, or were unlocked in certain ways or exclusive to 3DS, they are all playable here, which is awesome to bring it all together. And speaking of Legends, let's go over the content that was actually brought over specifically from that game. First up being the Ocarina and the Owl statues. Now that was a new kind of feature in that game that was brought over to really help you traverse the maps quicker. Because these stages can be as big as they are and you need to get from one end to the other really quickly sometimes due to objectives or if you're in the wrong spot, it's kind of a pain in the butt because then it ends up being a running simulator and you're running across all the way these huge maps and it's just, it's cumbersome. So to kind of remedy that, they introduced the Ocarina where now you can play it and if you activate all statues throughout the map, you can teleport all around. And that makes it really convenient, especially because of the character switching that was also brought over here on the Switch version. On the Wii U, you were stuck to playing just one character per map. Once you selected it and started the map, that's it. You were playing as Link the whole time or Impa. In the 3DS version, they introduced character switching where you can select three characters or however many characters are involved in the story and you have the ability to switch between them mid-match. And that was one of the things I loved so much and was so jealous of because it really diversified the gameplay because if you start playing maps for long periods of time, the gameplay starts a slugging a little because, you know, you're still playing the same character over and over, you're saying like the same combos over and over and maps can get upwards to 15 minutes long. And like I previously mentioned, because how big they were, Having multiple characters makes it so much better to be able to spread out your units, send them to different objectives, and actually help out there. This affects the gameplay even more where multiple characters will weaken bosses. The unique bosses that happen often throughout missions, if you get more than one character in that area, the more you get, there will be some status effects that make the boss a little bit weaker, and then of course they'll help and attack and take it out. Which is really fun, I like that like idea a lot. Especially because those bosses are a pain in the butt sometimes, I'm just saying. Then in Legend Mode, or Story Mode, now it contains Sia's Tale, Linkle's Tale, and the Saga of the Great Sea, which are all exclusive story content for the 3DS. In addition to that, the My Fairy Mode is well, now on the Switch version. The models are now 3D and are actually visible on the battlefield. I only barely have scratched the surface on that so far, but what I can tell what it does, it has, your fairy will have little effects, like revive you after, after fainting, 
maybe help you getting unique materials, stuff like that. A fun little side mode, just offering additional collectibles to this game. Like you needed more. Jeez. Now moving over to the Wii U. While it had less exclusive content, it did bring over, well, everything that was over there. So the challenge mode returns with Ganon's Fury and the Cuckoo's Fury. That was this exclusive Wii U mode from the 3DS, but to give I at least something on the Wii U for exclusive, but also because, I mean, shoot, you could, because there were so many enemies on screen and you were such a big character, it just, it wasn't gonna work, dude. Bringing back the two-player local co-op, except obviously instead of being split between the gamepad and TV, now it's just two players on one console on the screen. And this also works on handheld mode, which that's, that's pretty cool. The screen's small, but that's pretty cool. In addition to that, the 8-bit weapons return, which were actually omitted in Legends for some reason. And what's really cool about them is if you don't really like the style of it or it's a little bit too jarring, you can actually toggle them on and off in the menu. So then you're not stuck using a 8-bit weapon if it's your most powerful, if you just don't like the aesthetic of it, right? Then finally, the retailer pre-order costumes are simply unlocked in the adventure mode. Previously, when you pre-ordered Hyrule Warriors for Wii U, depending on which retailer you got it through, you'd actually get a special unique code to unlock Ocarina of Time Link, or Twilight Princess Link, or Skyloft Link. And there was even costumes for Ganondorf that were even exclusive through Club, Club Nintendo. You guys remember Club Nintendo? Yeah, I miss that. Man, being able to rake in all those free games was just so nice. Such a reward. What are we talking about again? And then finally, the deal from the DLC packages, all the adventure maps are now available as soon as adventure mode is even unlocked. So as soon as you unlock the first adventure map, the entire list of all the adventure maps are just there and ready to play. They're now actually scaled from difficulty, each map increasing from top to bottom, starting with easy down to like uber insane hard madness. I really like this because... How I previously mentioned about my experience with the adventure maps, how I haven't really played most of them, how they were originally scaled was, you know, there was a lot of easy stuff at the beginning, and the further you went into the map, the harder it got, which obviously is still true here, but overall, the whole map of adventure mode, the first one, would be easy, and then if you go farther down to, like, the Termina map, for example, that would be a more difficult experience all around. Because of that, you can kind of do them in a more linear fashion in a good way, where the, the maps kind of scale with the with you leveling up your characters. Because what kind of happened to me is I wanted to beat the first adventure map first in, in its entirety before I moved on to the additional DLC adventure maps. And because of that, I was kind of held back because I really had to grind and level up my characters to even beat that first map. But now they're kind of scaled with difficulty. It's a lot more streamlined experience, giving you the opportunity to much easier play all the maps. And speaking of the maps, the previous DLC characters are now unlocked via these adventure maps. They're basically specific tiles with unique rewards where you unlock these characters. Now let's move on to the new stuff to the Definitive Edition, which is a small list, but hey, there's some new stuff. Beyond the obviously changes that I just barely mentioned, there's now the Breath of the Wild outfits for Link and Zelda. Basically, you play one of the first couple of stages in the story mode and you'll get that. Boom, it's like the one of the first things you get, man. And it's really cool to see them there and have those costumes available as well, kind of calling back to that game. So, I mean, considering we have callbacks to nearly everywhere else in the Zelda series, I'm like, shoot, let's see something in Breath of the Wild, right? And then there's some economy balance and tweaks for upgrades, basically changing how much it costs for certain upgrades via materials, rupee costs, stuff like that, just overall balance the game and make it a more positive experience. Whew, that's a lot to go over. Oh, man. Now, this is hands down the definitive version of Hyrule Warriors. There's no question. It has all of the content of both previous versions with a lot of great changes to really make the experience d d definitive. It's, it's definitive. It's the best Dynasty Warrior games I've ever played. It is so much more unique than Fire Emblem Warriors ever was because of the unique and colorful enemies as well as like the settings. The weapons are so much more distinct here from one another and are actually fun to use. In Fire Emblem Warriors, a lot of characters kind of blended together, and heck, some even had the same moveset. While comparison to here, the characters are so much more flashy and crazy with their attacks. Like, you can play as Zelda with the Dominion Rod and summon these giant things to smash down on enemies. Or you can play with, you know, Ruto and her Zora scale, where all of a sudden she makes these giant waves of water. Then there's more traditional weapons, you know, like the Sword and Shield, or the Great Sword, or, you know, Daruk's Hammer. Daruk? Dratini. Wait. Runia? What's his name? Rude Rudania. Oh, wait, nope, that's the beast. Hold on. Darunia. There we go. 
Jeez, man, I was confused. Anyways, what are we talking about? This idea could maybe come back to my bias more for the Zelda series. Maybe these settings, these games, these characters have more of an impact on me just because I know them better than I maybe do the Fire Emblem characters. But I still know those Fire Emblem characters. And I, I think just, just the nature of that series where a lot of the characters do kind of blend together. They have a lot of similar, unique, similar designs, a lot of similar armor colors and characters. And I mean, even the blue hair meme. I mean, like a lot of mainline characters just have the blue hair. And because of that, I feel like the characters blend together more than they do here in Hyrule Warriors. If you look at just the silhouettes of these characters, they're just so distinct from one another. And I think that's such a strong suit of this game where each character feels so different from the next. Well, that's where I thought Fire Emblem struggled more. Another great thing about this game is it's portable, man. And it's not a sacrificed experience due to the hardware limitation. Heck, you can play two-player co-op on the go. Yeah, the screen is small, but technically you can do it. And that is super impressive in my eyes. And I keep getting blown away by this game being like, wow, this game looks really good, man. It looks really good. For what, a three-year-old game now? I think three-year-old game. 2015? I don't know. Let's see. 2014? Jeez, for a four-year-old game? I thought it was 2015. My bad. Man, it is, it is an amazing experience. It looks amazing. However, I can see some complaints for people who are returning to this game and have already played a previous version. But at the same time, for people who are Wii U users, all of the Legends content they missed out on. I mean, all the new, the three new story contents, the adventure maps that were exclusive, the characters that were exclusive over there, the My Fairy. So for them, they have a huge bulk of content that they can check out. Then for 3DS users, the experience, you know, isn't as watered down and held back by the hardware. There actually is a lot of enemies on screen and you can just plow through them and do crazy combos. Plus, I mean, the Wii U exclusive mode, like, you know, the Ganon and Kaku Fury, and then of course the multiplayer. There is stuff for both sets of returning players. In the end, obviously it's still the same experience, but like the title says, it's the definitive experience. Personally, I would have loved to see maybe a little bit more new. I mean, obviously, I still have a ton to go through as far as Legends content. I wouldn't mind to see something even oriented around Breath of the Wild. Even if it's not a new story thing, or like kind of like how the Great Sea was, which I would have loved to see via Breath of the Wild. But how cool would it have been if there was an adventure map and maybe bringing in a couple of characters from there, like maybe some of the Breath of the Wild champions or something. Just to give at least something new for all of the players, but at the same time, this game already has way too much content. This game has way too much content. I'm not even kidding. If you if you played everything, played everything, beat every single tile on the adventure map, even if you're not even going for gold on all of them, it would be, pfft, dude, it would be, I don't know. It, it'd be well over 500 hours before you get even close to completing all of it. Like, I kid you not. I Like I said, I got 100 hours in the game and I beat one adventure map. One adventure map. And that's the thing, even with still playing a previous version, I still really did love Hyrule Warriors. But technically, I should be giving it an obsessed. However, since it is my second time through, I don't know, blah, 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 but overall as a package I experienced, yeah, this is amazing. This game is fantastic. For those who have never played it, this is a must have Nintendo Switch title and it's just so much fun. Obviously, this does a lot more for Zelda fans than it does for people who haven't played many of the games, but at the same time, it's still very fun gameplay loop, and it's just an amazing experience overall. I personally am not really a fan of grindy games, but this one does a great job hiding that aspect, and it's just, it's absolutely addicting. Oh my gosh, trying to get all the, all the different weapon types, all the costumes, unlocking all the characters, <sighs> man. They knew what they were doing when they made this game, and there's a reason it's been released three times now on three different consoles. It's, it's that good. If you have any inkling of an idea thinking about picking this up, I highly recommend you act on this. But what do you guys think? Have you guys picked up Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition? Or is something holding you back? Or are you loving it, the hating it? I wanna know, let me know in the comments what is your experience with this game? I want to hear your ideas, your thoughts, your review on this. Let me, give me, let me know that in the comments below. Give this video a big awesome like. If you haven't already, definitely subscribe for tons more on Hyrule Warriors and other Nintendo Switch content. Thanks again guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya!